In this video, we will consider the following languages and determine whether they are decidable, Turing recognizable, or undecidable. And also note they might be more than one. If something is decidable, it's most definitely Turing recognizable. Also, it's possible for something to be undecidable, yet Turing recognizable. Okay, so consider the language um, ATM such that uh, it's a set of strings MW where M is a Turing machine and M accepts W. So we know from SIPSR that um, ATM is undecidable. Okay, a brief recap of that proof. Um, it's on page 207. So our proof says um, assume ATM is decidable and let H be, I'm just going to say its decider. Okay, so H is a TM that can decide ATM. Okay, so what does H do? It's going to accept if M accepts W and it's going to reject if M does not accept W. Okay, now what happens if we construct a new Turing machine, D, that uses H as a subroutine? D on input M, where M is a Turing machine, it's going to run H, the decider for ATM, on the input M along with M. Okay, so what are we saying here? M is given as the machine description and M is given as the string. Okay? And do the opposite of what H does. Okay? So if H says yes, M accepts the string M, then D is going to reject M. If H says no, M, the machine M, does not accept the string M, then D is going to accept M. Okay, so that's what D does. So now we're going to, it's the end of the description of D, we're going to run D on D. We're going to run it on itself. Okay, so let's trace out what that does. It's going to run H on D, D. Okay, if H accepts D, D. Okay, if this says H is the decider for ATM, it said that machine D accepted string encoding of machine D, and D does the opposite of that. Then D rejects D. Okay? Likewise, the other case, if H rejects D, D, then D accepts D. Okay, so don't be confused by the terminology. Remember what this means here is that D accepts the string that's the encoding of D. And what does this mean? D rejects. It means exactly what I have written there. D rejects the encoding of D. Okay, so in other words, when we run D on its own description, if it rejects its description, this implies that it accepts its description. Okay, so in other words, D does the opposite of what D does, which is a contradiction. Okay, so we get the contradiction. All right, so we've got that ATM is undecidable. Okay, is it anything else? Well, it can't be decidable, right? These are opposites. You can't be undecidable and decidable, but it is Turing recognizable. So what does a recognizer for ATM look like? Let's call it R. Um, on input 
mw, where m is a Turing machine and w is a string. It's going to simulate m on w and accept if m does. Okay, and it's that simple. All right, so r is a recognizer for ATM. To see that this is the case, um, if a string is in ATM, so if MW is an element of ATM, then it should be the case that M accepts W. Okay, well, what does this recognizer do? It simulates M on W and it accepts if M does. Bam. Okay, notice that we don't have to handle the case here if MW is not an element of ATM. What does this do? Well, um, we can run forever. Okay, we haven't explicitly said in the description we could add something that says if M rejects W, then reject, and if M runs forever on W, then run forever. Okay, alternately, we could just make this machine run forever if M does not accept W. Okay, it's always possible to make a machine run forever. Um, so, but remember, because R is a recognizer, we don't really need to handle what happens if the string is not in the language. We only have to make sure that if the string is in the language, we do accept. That's the one restriction on recognizers. Okay, so then ATM is Turing recognizable. Okay, so it's undecidable and Turing recognizable. Our next language is ADFA, which is a set of strings D, W, where D is a DFA and D accepts W. Okay, and we're gonna claim that A DFA is decidable. Again, the proof is in SIPSR, um, page 195, if you wanna look it up. Um, but a brief proof is to uh, create a TM that decides A DFA. We have a decider for a language that's decidable. So let's call that decider D, and what does D do? It's going to take an input, uh, I shouldn't have used D, but I did, so we're gonna run with it, MW, and what does it do? It's going to simulate M on W, if M ends the simulation in an accept state, accept if M ends in a reject state, well, that should be a C, reject state, reject. Okay, so notice that a DFA will halt on all inputs, right? It's going to consume its input, taking a transition for each um, symbol in the input, and once it runs out of symbols, it's going to halt. So we know that it will either end in an accept state or a reject state. Those are the only two kinds of states that we have. Okay, so M is definitely going to halt in either accept or reject, so then we have a decider for the language ADFA. Okay, so ADFA is decidable. Note that that also implies that ADFA is Turing recognizable. Okay, how do I turn the above into a recognizer? Well, it already is a recognizer um, because whenever the string is in the language, the machine accepts. Okay, notice, remember that with recognizers, we don't have to handle what happens if the string is not in the language, but we do have to accept in a finite number of steps if the string is in the language. Every decider already does that, so every decider is already a recognizer. Um, if I was just worried about recognizing and not worrying about deciding, then I could take out this line. And I could even add something that says, if M ends in a reject state, run forever. Okay, and that would make it um, purely a recognizer, no longer a decider, okay?
Our next language is all CFG, which is the set of strings G, encoding of a grammar, where G is a context-free grammar and the language of the grammar equals sigma star. So it's a grammar that generates all strings. I don't have time to do the proof, um, but there's a proof that all CFG is undecidable. Okay, and this is in Sipser, and it is theorem 5.13. Okay, also, um, something interesting is you might ask then, okay, is it also Turing recognizable? We're going to use the fact that if a language is Turing recognizable and its complement is Turing recognizable, it must be decidable to show that all CFG is also not Turing recognizable. Okay, and we're going to do this by showing that all CFG bar is Turing recognizable. Okay, so this means that all CFG is co-Turing recognizable. Same thing. Okay, how would we do this? We're just going to sketch out a proof. The idea is going to be to use the decider for ACFG. Okay, and let's call it D. I like D for deciders. Okay, we know that this is decidable. Um, it's in Sipser theorem 4.7. Okay, so I'm not going to prove it. I'm just going to point you to the theorem if you'd like to read the proof. Okay, so let's build a recognizer for all CFG R. Let's call it R. Okay, so on input G, where G is a grammar, what are we going to do? We are going to assume an ordering to the strings in sigma star. Okay, in another video we've shown that this is something that we can assume. It's not a faulty assumption. Two, we're going to run D on G W I where WI is the ith string in sigma star. We're going to do this for every i from 1 to infinity. This is a recognizer, so this is okay. Okay. If D ever rejects, Okay, this means we found a string that is not in the language of the grammar G, then we are going to accept. Okay, think about what all CFG bar is. It says that the language of the grammar is not sigma star. If we find some string that is not in the language of the grammar, which we know because D tells us, yeah, I'm going to reject that one, it's not in the language of the grammar, then that means that the language of that grammar is not sigma star, and so we go ahead and accept. Okay, so we've seen that we can build a recognizer for all CFG bar. If, therefore, um, all CFG is co-Turing recognizable. If all CFG was also recognizable, Turing recognizable, then all CFG would be decidable. We know it's not by theorem 5.13. Therefore, all CFG cannot be Turing recognizable. Okay, so it's just decidable, undecidable. Our next language is ECFG, which is the set of strings G, where G is a context-free grammar and the language of the grammar is empty. Okay, in other words, the grammar um, generates no strings or there are no derivations um, of strings in the grammar. Okay, so how would we determine um, if a grammar is empty? if a, the language of a grammar is empty. Well, the language of the grammar is empty only if we can't get from the start variable to a string of terminals. Okay, so a proof um, 
that this is decidable is as follows. So let's let D be the decider. I just like making deciders D. Okay, so it's going to take an input. That's the encoding of a grammar. And what are we going to do? We're going to mark the terminals in G. Okay, so our goal is to decide if um, the start state can reach any terminals, okay, or if any terminals are reachable from the start state. Okay, so we're going to repeat until no new variables get marked. Okay, so as long as we're marking new variables, we're going to continue. Notice in step one we marked all the terminals, so that's all that's unmarked when we start step two are variables. Okay, we are going to mark any variable A where G has a rule A goes to U1, U2, to UN, and each symbol of U1 up to UN is marked. Okay, so what does this do? Um, basically, we're saying that each variable can we're going to mark variables that can construct strings of terminals. Okay, so we started off by marking all of the terminals. The next thing that we would do is we would look and if any variable um, generates a string of only terminals, then we would mark that variable. Okay, now we would have some variables marked. So then we scan back through. Any variable that can now create a string of marked symbols, so now these can be variables or terminals, can eventually create um, a string of terminals, okay? Because everything, uh, everything on the right-hand side of its rule can create terminals, either they're terminals themselves or they're variables that have already been marked, so we know that they can create strings of terminals, and so then we mark that variable. Okay, we're going to continue in this fashion until we no longer have a new variable that we get marked in some iteration. Okay, so in other words, we've marked everything in the grammar that can construct a string of terminals. Okay, and then the last step is if the start variable is not marked, okay, what does that mean? The start variable cannot construct a string of terminals, we're going to accept. It means the language is empty. If it is marked, it means that start variable can generate some string of terminals, we're going to reject because the language is not empty. There is at least one string in it. Okay? So then D is a decider for E, C, F, G. So E, C, F, G is decidable. Okay? And because it's decidable, it's Turing recognizable.